Okay, well, welcome to uh, part one of uh, session five, and uh, what, we, what we'll be doing here is just basically creating a, uh, a fight game character, and uh, I'd like to really just start using some new artwork in this course, and uh, why not? Let's let's go with a, a zombie fighting theme, and uh, what we'll do in the next part is uh, start to work with achievements and leaderboards of a uh, game center. And uh, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is get your version of uh, Cocos 2D updated to the, uh, what is now 2.0. So uh, if you have not done that yet, uh, head over to Cocos2D-iPhone.org. Uh, and uh, if you go there anytime soon, well, you might actually see this right up front. But uh, if not, you might have to go over here to the download section and... I'm sure very soon the stable version will be uh, this one right here. Although, as it says back here on the home page, if no showstoppers are found, then this uh, version 2.0-RC2 will be renamed, renamed to just version 2.0. So we're real close to version 2.0 for reals. And uh, once you do that, once you get it installed, and if you need that... Uh, quickie lesson on uh, rewriting things uh, you can go over here to your terminal uh, window and just type in CD just take the download folder I put it on my desktop and then I just drag it into the terminal window and CD stands for change directory if you want to make sure that you're in there you can type LS and it'll show you all those files in the Cocos 2D folder and then from there all you need to do is uh, just paste in what you see uh, that I've typed over here and um, hit return and that will uh, install and overwrite the uh, the existing Cocos 2D templates and it's probably a good idea to have the Xcode closed at the time and then once you do that you'll be able to go over here to new project oh, there we go new project and how exciting is this look um, now you've got um, the previous version of Cocos 2D, and then this one that says version 2.x, uh, and um, I'm going to go through, uh, actually I've already saved out the project, but um, if you just click on next over here, you can just, as usual, just put in the product name. I'm going to go ahead and set this up for um, iPad, just for the extra screen space when showing you guys what we're doing, and uh, I just called this uh, fight game, so I'm just going to cancel that out, and um, I do. As I said, I already have it uh, open over this way. And uh, the app delegate is still around. Uh, the view controller class, I guess, has been moved somewhere or just, uh, I don't know. I don't know where it went to. But uh, our Hello World should look about the same, except for this highlighted uh, the, or these highlighted uh, bits about the um, achievements and uh, leaderboards. So these are uh, delegates classes and uh, we're gonna actually get into them in the next part uh, again like I'm saying we're just gonna do some basic setup here which trust me will be fun maybe even more fun <laughs> than setting up these things and uh, but again if those weren't there then this hello world would look just like it uh, it did before I guess actually minus the import statement for game kit up there as well and um, it's pretty cool that actually this is uh, they've got this kind of setup ready to go uh, right away now because if you were to just go ahead and run it and uh, test it in the simulator, you'd see your uh, usual Hello World statement. But then if you click on Achievements, uh, look what happens. You get um, the uh, uh, Achievement panel just comes up right away. And then the same thing, I don't know why it's running so slow. And then the same thing happens too for uh, leaderboards over here. Again, it's feels like it's coming up slower than it did last time. Uh, so again, that's going to be something that we look into in the next part. And so we're going to leave all that in there, but, uh, you know, again, it's, or as usual, if you wanted to just clear out your entire init statement, you could just highlight everything that I just highlighted here, get rid of all that, and I guess you could then also get rid of that stuff, and then you could also wipe out your, the two delegates over there, but let's not do that. Let's leave those in there. Uh, what we could do, though, is make it so that we're placing those um, that text someplace other than uh, in the middle of the screen so if we just take out that divided by two uh, I think then we should just see it uh, pop up on the top there then let's go and get rid of the hello world stuff so we'll just take that on out of there and what we should be left with then uh, is just again those uh, same two menu items just up there at the top and now let's go and jump back over here to our header file and begin 
set them some things up here, and I guess I should uh, bring in some of our resources that we're going to be using, because uh, better now than never. And why did I just get that? What, what's going on there? Semantic. Oh, shoot. Undo that. We do need some of that. My fault. Okay. All right. Now back over here to the header file. Okay. Uh, you guys can copy from this project over here. And on my end, I'm just going to copy from the, uh, the project I'm kind of working off of, my test example. So I'm going to take uh, shadows, and I've got iPad or dash iPad HD versions of all these images. Uh, so I'll but I'll just refer to the regular ones. So shadow, background, and then um, my Hank Sheet poses uh, property list file, and then my Hank Sheet poses .png file. So I'm just going to drop them all from one project into another. Just be sure you have this um, toggled on. And there we go, we've got uh, them all imported over here. This is just a shadow, that's the HD version of it. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, labeled iPad HD. Uh, same is true for all the HD images. Um, when they're this small, you can't really tell the difference between them, but the iPad HD ones are twice as big. And then we've got a, uh, a property list which describes the, uh, the location of uh, each one of these uh, poses of our uh, zombie character, Hank, over here. And again, the uh, HD one is twice as big. Okay. Um, and actually here, this is an open version of it in preview. And you can definitely see that those are um, much bigger images. And uh, we have not actually talked about um, exporting out uh, your images from a, for a sprite sheet uh, for the HD version. And uh, the only big thing to keep in mind is that um, when you when you dump your images, your source images, into your sprite generation software, uh, the names of those files should be the same uh, for your HD or your SD, your, your lower resolution ones. Uh, but the only difference is that when you export things out, you call it dash iPad HD property list or dash iPad. Yeah, oh, it's going to, it'll give you the right name for, if you just say dash iPad HD, it should export out the PNG and the PLIST file with the same name there. Okay, but um, again, the source images, those stay the same name be names because remember, those become your key in each one of these files. So um, you can see that the key, all right, doesn't have that dash iPad HD extension inside of here. So if I were to go and unfold down the frames, again, SD version, HD version, the key is the same. All right, so now let's go back over here to our header file. And we've got, oh, we've got quite a few things that we need to uh, start declaring through here, don't we? And there it is. I was about to say, I lost track of the file that uh, has all my notes on it. But no, it's, it's just floating over there to the right. OK, uh, let's uh, go ahead and set up these guys. Int screen width and int screen height. Okay, you guys can all know what we're going to use those for. Uh, CC Sprite, we'll call this uh, Zombie. This will, of course, be um, the image of our zombie, our buddy Hank over there. All right, uh, the shadow. This uh, will just end up following along uh, Hank, the uh, frame rate. So it'll kind of virtually always like hang there right next to him. but. Uh, and then we're going to set up a CC sequence action, which I'm going to call walk right. And then I'm going to also do another one called um, CC sequence walk left. And um, what these are going to do is combine together uh, some other actions. And I feel like in this course, I'm actually going to give actions their, their proper due. We talked about them way back in session one. And I showed you guys a few things with combining actions into a sequence. But um, it wasn't really until I uh, started looking into um, teaching this that, that I was like sold on them. I was like, wait a minute. These are really actually pretty cool. Um, I didn't think I'd use them um, so much for like uh, controlling the action of a gaming character. Uh, just because I'm a little stubborn, uh, I thought, oh, I'll just write my own methods for uh, jumping up and down and things like that. But um, 
now that I've been playing around with them, I really think that there's a, there's a lot to these. <laughs> and um, So we're, we'll explore them more, but um, the sequence will basically just be um, a combination of, well, in um, the case of like kicking, all right, which is, I'm just gonna keep typing these and I'll, and I'll describe it too. Um, in the case of kicking over here, all right, uh, we're gonna show the kicking frames, you know, from that, um, the, uh, sprite sheet and then we're also going to um, make the character move a little bit okay because you know when you kick whatever forward you um, you're gonna you know move just a tad and uh, then once those two actions are done and they're gonna be played together uh, then we're gonna call a function afterwards okay and that just basically um, tells the program here that uh, we're done kicking all right or we're done punching or we're done um, jumping and uh, well let's go ahead and talk about this variable then too since I just kind of introduced it move in progress all right so um, when you begin doing any of these um, uh, actions we're gonna set uh, move in, or actually I should say when we're gonna begin doing any of these three uh, we're gonna set this move in progress to yes um, and then when it finishes it's gonna set back to no uh, for walking though Walking is not really considered a move in the sense that I'm thinking. I'm thinking a move is like a, an attack move. Okay, so um, if you were to kick, jump, or punch, uh, that would disallow you, or that would allow you to um, stop walking. All right, but if you were kicking, jumping, or punching, and you um, made the gesture to walk left or right, it's not going to do that. Okay, because you don't want to counter your attack move. If you accidentally swiped a little bit to walk left or right okay but obviously if you were walking and you wanted to start punching that's allowed okay so that's one of the main reasons for that uh, that variable right there but also too I don't want to uh, get you guys um, you know piling up your actions where you're jumping and kicking at the same time and I mean even though that would be a fun action it <laughs> we should have a specific action saved for that like jump kick Okay, uh, now we are also going to create a CC sprite frame, which is gonna hold our default uh, pose. So anytime we're done with one of our moves, we're just gonna go and uh, make the zombie show this CC sprite frame. Okay, of course, it gets those frames from our um, property list or our big image. And then we get to look into some gesture recognizers in uh, this course. And the first one will be this uh, um, tap gesture recognizer. And uh, we'll just call this tap to punch. And the next one will be UI tap recognizer. Tap to kick. And the way these work is if I were to tap the screen twice, uh, it'll punch. If I were to tap the screen twice with two fingers, it uh, would kick. And then let's also get a UI swipe. Oops. Swipe gesture recognizer in there. And this will be swipe up. And then we just paste these out here. Swipe up will make you jump. Swipe left will make you walk left and swipe right will make you walk right. Okay. And then I think actually we're done with those guys. We're done setting up everything in the uh, the header file for now, okay. Uh, but we do have to um, set up some things as, a, as properties here. And let me just go ahead and type this out and I'll explain why, retain. Okay, we're gonna take all of these guys right here. They're, they are gonna be our properties and just gonna paste them all down there and the reason uh, they're properties is because we want to retain them otherwise if we don't retain these um, what's gonna happen is uh, they're just gonna get auto released okay so just kind of the memory of <laughs> what we had set up here uh, with these actions and remember that they're, they're kind of actions 
compiled of other ac actions or composed of other actions. Um, we want to use them over and over again. We don't want them to get uh, auto released. And the nice thing about actions is that um, if you don't, if you only want to use them once, they do get wiped out, cleaned from memory after a while. So um, we do need to retain them. And then, with that in mind, we need to jump over here to our uh, implementation file and actually synthesize these guys. And you should be getting a warning at that point telling you something like that, that you need to synthesize them. So if we start uh, typing them out, that should recognize they need to go in there. And there's the last one. Okay. Uh, try to save it at this point, and hopefully you don't have any other issues. If you can, again, if you want to look at all this at, at one big glance, uh, go for it. There it is. Uh, we don't actually really have to do much else with the header file for this part of the course. We can now go over down over here to our init statement, and I kind of feel like folding all of this up. But well. Just try to ignore it. How about that? Okay. I'm giving myself some breathing room over there. All right. The easy stuff. Screen width and screen height. Uh, we'll make them equal to size that width and size that height. And uh, let's go ahead and just do a kind of a cut and paste job on the stuff that we already know, like this. Background equals CC sprite, sprite with file. This is going to be our background file. And add it to the scene. Uh, it's going to be at a depth of negative two, so we can put the shadow at negative one. Then we'll put our uh, main character at zero. And then it's just going to go in at uh, right in the middle of the stage there. Okay, now let's go over here and put our, um, our property list into or actually I should say our sprite frames into these shared sprite frame cache. Okay, so CC sprite frame cache, shared sprite frame cache, that's at singleton that uh, manages the sprite frames. And then we just put in here add sprite frames with file. Okay, and um, then we just need to Put in Hank sheet poses dot p list, and remember we don't actually have to do anything um, code-wise to account for that uh, the, the dash iPad HD version. We don't have to type in here dash iPad. You know, uh, it's going to know to look for that, which is pretty sweet. Um, also, I, I might as well point this out now too. Um, if you were to go over here to your app delegate file, um, they made it very easy to uh, change the uh, suffixes for uh, the various retina versions. Okay, so I don't know why you really would want to. Might as well go with you know the defaults in here, but uh, that is available. All right, and then now let's go over here and set up our default pose. Okay, so our default po pose is now going to equal. CC sprite frame cache, shared sprite frame cache, and we'll just write here add sprite frames with file. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope. I was looking back at the previous line. This is a sprite frame by name. There it is. Okay. And then we're going to put in here Hank fighting default dot png. And if you're ever curious about the um, about the particular keys in here, you could always go and look at uh, the, just the whole list of them. Okay, so there's Hank fighting default.png, and we're going to be setting up uh, ones based on the kick and the punch and the jump. And the the jump is actually this spinning one right here. But uh, if you wanted to set up more of them, there is actually a lot more frames in here that you could possibly uh, use. So you could just kind of have some fun with that. All right, so back over this way. Now uh, we are going to write zombie. This is going to equal CC sprite. And this will be sprite with sprite frame name. This will be my default pose. And then self add child. Zombie. 
copy that position. And CCP, so be 300 and 300, of course. Instead of CCP, you could always just write CG point uh, make. And then, oh, let's go ahead and get the shadow in there, and then we'll give it a quick test. Okay, so shadow, and why am I, uh, why, are you, why are you giving me a warning here? What's going on? And there's the problem. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have a little bit too much in there. <laughs> and shadow equals. Oh, let's just copy this out. <laughs> Getting too old for this. Okay, it's just going to be uh, shadow and. Uh, get rid of that. By the way, I didn't. Uh, I didn't declare this uh, background in the header file because. I'm just adding it in there, and then I'm doing absolutely nothing with it after that. So there's really not a need to declare it for other methods to see. Okay, and then the shadow dot position will just be uh, based on the zombies uh, position. So let's just go with uh, zombie dot position dot x minus 10 pixels. Of course, I already figured that out beforehand. I'm not just guessing at it. Uh, and then this will be zombie dot position dot y minus a hundred. And again, I figured that out before uh, too. But after we initially set this up um, in our update method, which is again going to be constantly running at the frame rate of the movie, when we move around the shadow, it always stay locked into the um, the X position of the zombie. Okay, so no matter where he goes, left or right, the shadow is going to follow along with him. But uh, afterwards, uh, the shadow will always stay at the same Y location. Okay, because think about it, if the zombie were to jump up in the air, we don't want the shadow to jump up with him because the shadow should stay on a kind of virtual ground plane. Uh, so it'd look weird if it, it went up or down with him. Okay, and uh, now I think we are at a place where we can actually uh, test things out. And you know, before I test things out, uh, let me go ahead and just uh, correct this little error here that probably everybody watching the video already picked up on. That is actually Hank, not Hand. And uh, then once you do that, it should look something like this. And I'll try to act like I didn't just re-record over uh, my mistake from earlier. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> I crashed the application. Okay, so there he is. He's just in his default uh, stance. And you can kind of make out the shadow underneath there. Uh, obviously, he's not moving around or doing anything there because, well, that's the next thing that we have to set up. Uh, so I'll just uh, kind of put in some uh, ha um, backslashes there. And then uh, let's, uh, let's write set. Oh, actually, let's do one more. Set up walk. Okay. And what we're going to do is create a uh, NS mutable array. And so we're actually going to kind of step out of uh, Cocos 2D for just a moment and just uh, use some of the oops, core language here. NS mutable array, and this will be uh, walking frames. Okay, and if uh, you guys have need a reminder, and NS or an array just in general is kind of like a variable that holds many variables okay and what we're gonna do is uh, say that this has a capacity of nine so it can possibly hold nine objects okay and to say that it holds objects is um, absolutely correct okay four uh, and, and we're gonna use this uh, for statement to add all the uh, the frames in there but uh, you know you don't actually have to do that. What you could get away with would be something like uh, this. So I could put in here walking frames, add object, and then the object could be I think it could be written like this. And here, Hank, walk forward, one.png, okay. 
Um, so the whole, the entire object would be this uh, CC sprite frame, okay? And then uh, we want to add a second one, two, three, and so on like that, okay? So adding objects. Uh, but what we're gonna do is uh, kind of make it a little bit simpler on ourselves by writing four. Might not look simpler, but believe me, it is. Uh, four uh, int. Okay, so the equals well, i is just gonna equal one right here. And as long as i is less than or equal the number nine. Okay, and again we have uh, a capacity of nine. All right, so take note of that. Um, then this block within these brackets is going to be true and we will just iterate through uh, the contents of this nine times and each time what we're going to do is uh, perform the code that we're about to write so we're just going to set up a uh, ns string file is going to equal ns string this will be a string with format and here's where we're gonna I'm gonna put in Hank uh, walk forward. Okay, so this is um, part of the key in the property list. And then my percentage i. All right, so that part right there is gonna get replaced out by whatever the variable i, no connection, uh, equals at the time. Okay, so. This is initially going to equal uh, uh, one, so the first key that's going to find uh, to make a string name out of will be Hank walk forward one dot png. All right, then what we're going to do is just um, make a cc sprite frame. This will be called frame. This is now going to equal um, cc sprite frame cache shared sprite frame cache and this will be sprite frame by name okay and uh, then we just put in there the uh, file name that we created all right and of course none of this stuff gets uh, retained or anything like that it's just gonna it's kind of here for a moment and then gone all right and then finally we take our um, array Oops, I'm sorry Take our array variable and then we just put uh, add object and then we just write frame in there. Okay, so every time this iterates through, frame will be something slightly different and then, um, and the, of course, the file will be something slightly different. All right, now um, we will come back to those walking frames in just a moment. Uh, but one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, create an action here called cc uh, call funk. Okay, and I'm gonna call this move done. All right, and as I kind of explained before, when a, a move is going on, we will set that boolean variable to yes, and then when it's done, uh, we'll set it to no. So um, uh, all we have to do in here is write cc call func, name it, and then action with target. This is gonna be self, so just this class, and then selector is just gonna be at selector. And then we put in uh, the, the method signature inside of here. So uh, I'm just going to call this something like allow another move. Okay. And that's kind of all well and good, but uh, we need to actually go somewhere outside of our init statement now and write that uh, method. Otherwise, we'll definitely get an error later on. So allow another move, not another movie, another move. And for right now, actually, you know what? We can go ahead and fill in everything for this particular function. So we'll say move in progress equals no. And then um, the other, only other thing that we do after a move is done is write zombie set display frame. And then we just put in there that uh, default pose again. Okay. All right, so now we can go right back up to where we were before and it would be safe uh, to call this. Okay. And every one of our sequences, okay, so every one of these guys, walk right, or yeah, every one of them, is gonna end with that same exact um, 
call function. Okay, so if you were to start walking, eventually when you get done walking, you're going to end up looking like that again. Okay. All right, so back over here, uh, we will now write CC animation, and this will be walk animation, which is going to equal CC animation, animation with sprite frames, and we do want to put a delay in there as well. So we specify the amount of times between uh, frames. And of course now this is where we repeat back our walking frames variable. And then the delay will just be, um, I'm just going to put 0 0.1 in here, so it's just one tenth of a second. And then CC animate. Okay, so the first thing we had was a CC animation action, and then this is going to be a CC animate action, and I'm going to call this one animate walk. Okay, and I'm not doing anything different for my left and right walking um, actions, at least for right now. Okay, so then we just repeat back CC animate, and then action with animation. All we put in here now is just walk animation. Close that one off. And then now, what I'll do is write CC move by. Okay. And now we start getting into the differences between walking left or right. So this is going to be move right. And this is going to equal CC move by action with duration. The duration is going to be 1.0. That's going to be the time. So it's going to take one second. And then the position we put in here is going to be. Um, CCP and then 50 and 0. And let's explain that. Uh, it's going to move him, move the zombie by 50 points to the right. Okay, if this was negative, it would be to the left. Okay, and this means that the, by setting it 0, we're not going to change on the uh, y axis at all. Okay, so he's going to stay exactly where he is on the y. He's just going to move over a little bit on uh, the X. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could play around with that setting. If you want to move them further, faster, whatever, um, go for it. You know, Those numbers are all safe to uh, play with. Okay, CC spawn, and I'm going to write spawn, walk right. What this is, is it's going to run both of those previous two actions at once. Okay, so it's not a, a sequence moves one thing after another. All right, so it does the first action when that completes. Then it goes to the next one, CC spawn. They both come out at once. All right, so CC spawn, and then actions. You just put in here your actions, and this will be animate walk. Uh, and you comma, comma separate them, and then you always have to finish off the list with uh, nil. Okay, so this is kind of the bookend. Close that off. All right, so, and we should start to, well, we. <laughs> It's funny. At times, we we create new one of the new unused variable warnings in here. Uh, when we all when we're all said and done, we shouldn't be seeing any of those. All right. Now, after this, we get to write self dot walk right. Okay. And we have to put self in here because uh, this is a, a retained property, and uh, for some reason, it just doesn't like it if you don't put that in there. All right. And uh, this will be a CC sequence actions. And now we get to put in here our spawn walk right, and then um, our uh, move done. Close that off. And uh, let's see. You know what? What we can do now is just copy a little bit of this. All right, so that actually finishes up the uh, walking of the right. Now we can just write walk left. And for this, we can change this. Move left, spawn walk left. And this will be move left. Uh, this we want to be negative. And of course, this will be spawn walk left. And we can leave in uh, the move done here. We don't have to make like duplicate ones of these for each one of the um, the sequences. And I think if I'm looking at this right. I think we just finished this one off too. Uh, so let's just go ahead and kind of 
visually make it give it some uh, something so you can tell the difference between all these various <laughs> things that we're gonna do that which almost look like this uh, you know, over and over again. Uh, but you know, it'd be a little bit more fun if we actually went and started testing these out before we have to go through and write the punch and the jump and the kick. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, one thing I do need to address right now, which I kind of forgot to do before, which is um, that we should set these to nil in the dialloc statement or deallocation statement here. So self dot walk equals nil, and then. Um, Self dot walk right. This is also going to equal nil. Self dot punch is going to equal nil. And you know, um, Cocos 2D is, is very forgiving in terms of uh, memory. It uh, does tend to get rid of stuff for you. Uh, but if you explicitly retain it, uh, which we haven't done a lot in, the, in any of these sessions, uh, you do you are responsible for getting rid of it in the end. So again, because we put in here. Uh, at property retain uh, we do need to come back over here and set it to nil uh, I, I had to do some research on my own I thought <laughs> what you had to do is right uh, this kick release oops, no, not really. release then go and write kick equals nil but it turns out uh, this is one of those strange cases where uh, just setting it to nil because it is a property does both of these things for you so did not have to do that. All right, uh, so let's go over here and just to keep things a little bit more organized, or really kind of almost just to keep keep us from having to write everything in the init statement. Let's go ahead and write self add um, swipe to move gestures, and all I'm doing here is I'm just really just taking the action out of the init statement and I'll put it into this method of our own that we're gonna write so come down here you can do this really anywhere you want but just I'm gonna put it below the allow another move statement and I'm just gonna write oops. there we go create a method for it and Here we go. Swipe left. This is going to equal two of these brackets right here. UI swipe uh, gesture recognizer allocate it. So again, this is actually another instance where we're going to have to release something. Uh, init with target. The target's going to be self, and the action. It's going to be um, a handler method. I, I, I call it a handler method. A lot of people do this. I'm just going to start them all with handle. Okay, that's the only thing that makes it a handler method. <laughs> handle, swipe left. Okay, and then I can close off that whole big block right there. So uh, we do need to create a method after this that's going to handle swiping. All right. Uh, but until then, let's go ahead and just paste down here, swipe um, left dot number of uh, touches required. We're going to set this to just being one. And then um, swipe uh, left. This is going to be direction. Because so far, really nothing is making this, uh, or nothing is choosing what direction we're going here. So this will be uh, swipe. Uh, there we go. Just going to fill it all in for us. Direction left. And obviously, you saw some of the other options in there. And get ready for three brackets. <laughs> One, two, three. And this will be CC director, share director, type in here view, close off the second one of those. And then we just have one more to close off. The only thing that we have to write now is add gesture recognizer. And then we just put in here swipe uh, left, done close that and then the only thing we need to release is swipe left and then release okay and uh, the 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 view here uh, now takes control of the um, the gesture recognizer so it's safe to get rid of this guy it's, um, it's 
you know it's hanging around there for us but uh, we can release it in this case and uh, now we, we need to do is just uh, put in here void handle swipe left and what we're going to write in here is uh, UI swipe gesture recognizer and then you can put in here a recognizer so those are, those are the parameters that uh, follow coming in oops it looks like I forgot to here we go so we could we could query things about the uh, the swipe like for example we could say if recognizer dot state equals um, and then uh, let's see yeah there we go uh, if we could test to see if it was like the beginning of the state or if it had just ended uh, but in our case we don't actually need to do any of that it's just you know we should just pass this in anyway because hey who knows you might want to look into that and anyway because we put that colon right there it's expecting some other parameter in here uh, but uh, yeah at any time I guess you could just go through here and just write UI gesture uh, yeah you can just kind of pick through any of these other ones that might be of interest to you and um, there is a there's definitely a place for that I mean you know there's a maybe I'm trying to think maybe they're not so much with the the beginning of a swipe but um, you know there's gesture recognizers for uh, rotation and things like that so you might want to know when someone had was done rotating and that's um, that's how you could check that so you throw an if statement in there okay but uh, getting a little off topic <laughs> we're gonna write if and then if move in progress equals no okay so if you aren't currently moving okay then what we're gonna do or I should say if you aren't currently um, uh, doing one of your attack moves then we're going to write in here zombies stop all actions okay so it means it's just uh, you're going to stop what you're currently doing and really the only case for this would be if like you were already walking to the left or the right it's going to stop that and then we're going to write zombie run action okay and then we just put, put in here walk left we don't have to write self before it and then um, if you wanted to what you could write is uh, just an else statement in here and if you just want to um, send a message to the output window that just says uh, move already in progress and again this is just strictly for testing it's uh, just to make sure things are running right and um, now we could actually go <laughs> I think and uh, run this hopefully we don't get an error if uh, we did, it's probably something stupid, like I forgot to, I don't know, I wrote hand instead of Hank. <laughs> and uh, everything, if everything does run uh, smoothly here, what we're going to do is um, obviously add it in our swipe right uh, gesture recognizer, and we'll, we'll be able to just do some quick cutting and pasting there. But uh, all right, so let's see what's going on. I'm just going to swipe to the left. Hey, sure enough, he runs. Of course, the shadow is not following him right now. Uh, we will set that up in just a little bit. But uh, let's go ahead and just do swipe right. Change that to right. You know what? I'm going to leave this as left for a, a moment. I want to show you guys something. If you hit um, just Apple F, and you go over here and just uh, type in left, you'll notice something kind of cool here. If you're ever just copying a big block of code, and you have to do something simple like this, just change a right to a left or an up or to a down, um, if you're not sure if you got everything, you could just go and, and uh, do a find, and you can see that obviously it highlights all that stuff. So then, uh, you know, I can see at a glance here. Oh, wait a minute! I forgot to change this one over here to right. So, lazy programmer 101. And now we're just gonna write handle swipe right. And the only thing we have to change here is that this will now be uh, walk right. And if we wanted, we could go ahead and stop this, run it again, just to make sure everything is running as expected. So now, if I come over here and I swipe right swipe left perfect okay so let's go back over here to the top and 
got a lot more to type in. Um, no, 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 no. You know what I'm going to do? Let's go ahead and paste in some of this at least. Our um, our uh, arrays are going to run really just the same way as they did before. So uh, I'm just going to change the array name. This will just be punch frames, array with capacity 5. And um, these file names, the keys for them actually start at zero. I kind of wish I had I remembered that, that <laughs> the walk forward ones start at one, but all the other ones start at zero. So just, uh, you know, well, I'm telling you now so you know. But uh, this will be uh, Hank Punch over here. And then everything else is um, just exactly the same. Uh, so our uh, CC animation and CC animate are really just the same thing too. I'm just the delay is going to be uh, 0.1. Uh, that's what it was before. And then the actually looking at the move with uh, or the move by is uh, pretty much really the same thing too. Just a shorter duration, and then uh, you're not moving as far. It's only 10 uh, points uh, forward, and I have, I have to kind of have to remember to say points now instead of pixels because with the high resolution devices, that saying pixels is not really that accurate. And then uh, I thought it just looked better to put in a, a an easing action in here. So this um, the CC ease out statement or action is uh, now basically just going to hold our move with punch. And uh, you can set a rate in here as well that just basically kind of just determines the easiness of it. And of course you could play around with uh, that on your own. And then from there, it um, everything should look about the same. So we've got our CC spawn, spawn punch with um, spawn punch moves, and then the actions are going to be that uh, animate punch, um, ease with move punch. So you don't put in the move with punch, you put the ease with move punch. And then uh, from there, we just then need to put, set up the sequence. So self dot punch, and the sequence is you punch, and then you call move done. And that does the same thing it did before. And then we can now go ahead and write in here um, self add tap to punch gestures. So let's go ahead and um, kind of get those guys in here as well. And I'm going to come down to the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and do this outside of where we did any of the swiping. And this will be add tap to punch gesture. Um, you know what? This is very pasteable too, to be honest. Um, tap to punch. UI tap gesture recognizer. A knit with target. Same thing we saw before. So we're gonna write a method called handle tap to punch. And uh, I'm gonna say that you need to put in two taps here. All right. So you gotta just kind of click click or well tap tap on your screen real fast, and that's just gonna recognize that those two quick taps. And uh, the number of touches required is only going to be one because remember for my kick one, I'm going to require that you do two of them. And uh, then the same thing as before, just uh, CC director shared uh, director. Uh, if you were using an older version of uh, Cocos 2D, this was previously OpenGL view, but you can see that they've uh, crossed that out. And then uh, add gesture recognizer, tap to punch, and then you just release it over here. And then let's go ahead and write in the... Handle tap to punch. Um, really, the same thing is going to go on here, so I'm just going to paste that on uh, as well. Uh, move in progress. If it equals no, then essentially nothing's going to happen. You're just going to say move already in progress. But actually, here's the one big difference. If or because this is a punch, uh, move in progress is going to equal uh, yes. Okay. And think about that. All right. Previously, we didn't have it in there alright uh, but now there's actually a reason for this to um, this first part to be true ever because uh, uh, nowhere else had in here had we ever put in move in progress equals yes so this was this first part was always going to um, get run anyway alright so now uh, only if uh, move in progress is equals no will this occur since this gets set to yes, the only time that I get switched back to no again is when the move is actually done. So we allow another move in here. Or that's what our move done CC call func uh, does. And otherwise, you just stop the actions uh, and then uh, you run the action and uh, punch. 
Um, and in a case like this, there really shouldn't be any other... No, no, that's not true. That's not true. I was about to say that um, this line is maybe unnecessary, but no, that's not the case because if you were walking left or right at the time and you went to go punch, then you would want to stop that uh, previous action first. Okay, so I'm going to really quickly do the same just cut and paste job for kicking. Okay, and I'll start actually by just putting in the gesture recognizer. All right, add tap to kick gesture. Handle tap to kick, handle tap to kick. You can see that the number of touches required equals two here. Same exact thing is going on. Uh, let's jump back up to the top of the file again. And here we go. Uh, set up. This will be the kick. And once again, let's go and just take everything, paste it on in there. Um, I'm just uh, again sending him. Well, actually, well before I was sending him forward. This time I'm going to send him backward just a little bit to uh, kick. I actually thought that kind of looked better than moving forward. And I don't know, just it's it's something different. So why not? Uh, you can see the kick frames again. Start with zero in there and um, easing him again as well. And um, yeah, pretty much everything that we were doing before. So let's go ahead and uh, test this out and then uh, we'll look at uh, jumping, which really isn't that much different either. All right, so moves forward, moves backward. That's still in there, that's good to see. All right, so if I double tap, kind of punches forward like that. And of course, if you're in the simulator here, you can hold down the option key and that simulates having two fingers touching the screen. So let's do a double tap in there and hey, look at that. He is now slightly moving backward and kicking at the same time. So now that we've done it, let's go ahead and uh, throw in set up jump. And I will do the big old paste job in here for this one as well. OK, jump frames. Again, these start at 0. Uh, there was only th I only had three, or I should say four frames for um, jumping, which what he's doing is actually spinning at the time. So it's kind of like an, an attack spin. And uh, so we're adding those frames. Uh, then CC animation, jump animation. Uh, the delay is a little bit faster this time. So before it was 0.1, now it's 0.05. And uh, that's because I'm going to end up repeating the action. So it doesn't need to be an extra line there. So jump down here, and um, so it's animate jump. Just using that again. All right, that hasn't changed. But now I've added in this CC repeat action, and I call it repeat animation. And uh, this just equals action with action. The only extra parameter in here is the times. So it's going to repeat two times. All right, so it's going to take that long, much longer for the action to you know finish. Uh, but it's still really quick anyway, because when you think about it, the, the delay is. Uh, one twentieth of a second, and you've got four frames, and that's like one. Of those. It's really just taking about a half a second for him to spin and spin around. Uh, and then we've got an actual action in here called CC jump by, and uh, the parameters in here are action with duration. You can see I put down about a half a second for this, and then the uh, position is going to be just going uh, forward. Uh, 10 points. So he's going to end 10 points, you know, further to the right than he was previously. And then <clears throat> the jump goes up a height of 100. And of course, you could have some fun and, and make that 200, whatever you want to do. And then you, you can actually put in the amount of times that he's going to uh, perform the jump. So if you wanted to get, you know, kind of crazy, you could have him jump two times and actually repeat it, you know, four or five times, whatever you want to do. And, um, and again, yeah, it might be silly to have them jump higher. All right, then um, you just spawn the jump. So just throwing in there that repeat animation, then the jump by. And then the sequence is going to be obviously spawn jump and then move done as usual. And then we just have to go find our, um, or I have to actually write our add swipe to jump gesture. And I'll go ahead and just put this down below everything else that we already have. And, uh, oh, I forgot. Actually, this is, uh, I kind of changed these for my version. Okay, so swipe up, um, 
now we're back to using swipes instead of taps again and touches required is just one the direction is going to be up and uh, the handler here will be handle swipe up and yet again everything else uh, should look identical so move in progress equals yes and we're done with that so if we were to test this um, we should be able to see him jumping up in the air and then afterwards all we need to do is um, schedule an update There we go and the uh, again that uh, that update will just be to lock the shadow in place and also we'll keep them uh, in the screen uh, boundaries as well because we don't want them just walking off the stage okay so scoot all the way back over here to the top uh, actually I should say the let's go down to the end of where we did everything else uh, let's just put a little note in here as schedule update and to be honest I can't remember if we've actually talked about this or not we've um we've looked into uh, um, scheduled methods many times before but I don't know if we've ever actually just written schedule update and um, with this you just write self schedule update and then um, you can cut down let's go do it right here uh, and then you just write a method called void update and then you just add in here CC time Delta so it's kind of like just a a lazy man's way of uh, writing writing an update method you just to, you just don't choose your own name you just have to go with update and that's the method signature there and uh, now we can write in here uh, shadow top position equals CCP and as I explained before this will be the zombie top position dot X minus 10 and then shadow dot position I feel like I did something wrong because it's not let's see there we go. Well, let's just finish this off and see what happens no it just wasn't automatically filling in the like the position and stuff like that so I thought I did something I thought I made a mistake as soon as your code hinter stops code hinting, that's a good indication you've made an error. All right, and then this last part is just uh, zombie.position.x. If it ever is less than zero, then in that case, what we shall do is go over here to write zombie, stop all actions. Okay, so no matter what you're doing, stop. All right, and <laughs> it's kind of like me instructing my kids. Uh, and then self allow another move. So I'm going to call this because since we aren't stopping any of the other previous actions, uh, we do want to allow another move after that. All right, because remember that boolean variable would still be set to, um, um, you know, yes. And uh, then all we need to do is just write zombie dot position equals ccp one. All right, so instead of if Basically, if you've gone below zero, you're now going to go bumping right back up to one again. And then uh, we'll just make the zombie dot position dot y. Oh, you know what? That's funny. I think I actually just noticed a little error here because if you jumped off frame, uh, you would stay up in the air. So, huh. Let's do this. change this a little bit CG point oh no 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 let's go all the way back over here to the header file um, CG point equals starting position okay so now jump back over here to the oh, I should have saved it okay now over here starting position equals CCP and oh here we just paste that in there Okay, so it's a little redundant to write 300 and 300 in there twice, so I can just put in here zombie position equals the starting position, and then I'm going to come down here wherever I had that, uh, wherever I was writing this. So instead of the zombie's current position dot y, which again could be affected by that jump, uh, what I want to put in there is starting position dot uh, y. Okay. And with 
to create your own CG point variable like that, you can of course just write dot and then um, x or y afterwards. Okay. And, uh, you know, of course I could have just written 300 in here because I remembered that I started him at 300, but, you know, it's better for you as a programmer to think, you know, maybe I'll forget one day or maybe, you know, you just don't want to have to, you know, have the starting location essentially in written in a few different locations. Okay, so uh, otherwise, uh, else if uh, zombie dot position dot x is ever greater than the screen width, then in that case, what we're gonna do is essentially the same thing, just put all that uh, back in there. Uh, this time though, we'll just write screen width minus one, and then again, the starting position will always be the, uh, the dot y low, starting, I'm sorry, wherever you're at on the Y. Okay, wherever you started at. And uh, now I think we are ready to test this guy out. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to move backwards. Obviously, my shadow is um, sticking around with me there. And I'll try to get over here to the. Oh, see? Like, you can see the first frame, but you can't. Uh, you know, you get, he stops doing whatever he was doing. And of course I can jump forward. And there we go. Since we have so much vertical space <laughs> above and below the zombie here, it does make sense actually if we, we uh, made the uh, the height a bit or the, the yeah, the height of the jump more something more than a hundred. So I would play around with uh, that and the repetitions in there and what I want to do is I just kind of want to get him to the point where I can test uh, so if I jump yep there we go so that, that's that is working he's jumping forward and then when he jumps forward he ends up going he's exceeding this uh, screen width and uh, he gets sent back to his uh, correct starting position um, y variable Okay, so in the uh, the next part of this, what we're gonna do is play around with the achievements and the leaderboard. Okay, which should be pretty fun, maybe.